I rank number one for one of the most competitive key terms out there on Google. Can you take a guess what it is? It's online marketing. And you know what? Guess how much money that one keyword makes me? Little to nothing. Why? Because I picked the wrong keyword to rank number one for. Hey everyone, I'm Neil Patel, and today I'm gonna share with you how to find the right keywords to rank number one on Google for. The first tip I have for you is go put in your competitor URL in SEMrush. What SEMrush will show you is your most popular pages that your competitors are getting traffic for. This will give you ideas of what your competitors are doing. If your competitors are bigger than you, they probably know what they're doing and they're probably going after keywords and traffic that's converting into leads and sales. So you want to make sure you look at their strategy before you come up with your own. So once you've figured out the most popular pages, go take those pages and go put them into Ahrefs. Ahrefs will show you how many links each of those pages have. And you know what the hardest thing is? Is to build links. So what you want to do is go look for the most popular pages that have the least amount of links. That means those are the pages you should be focusing on first. It'll give you ideas on all the keywords that your competitors are ranking for when they don't have a ton of backlinks. That'll give you idea of the ones you should be targeting first, because not only will they drive you a lot of traffic, but they're the least competitive because you don't have to build backlinks. The second tip I have for you is use Google Search Console. Did you know that Google gives you a free tool that helps you rank number one? And yes, it's called Google Search Console. It breaks down all of your rankings, the keywords that your pages are getting traffic for, and even the positioning. Is it page one, page two, page three? the six spot on page one, right? It breaks down exactly where you're ranking. Now the cool part about Google Search Console is when you dive deep into each of your pages using the search analytics, it shows you all of the impressions that you're getting for keywords that you're on the bottom of page one for. The reason you wanna go after the keywords that you're bottom of page one for, it's way easier to rank number one for a keyword that you're already on the first page for versus going after a brand new keyword that you're not even in the top 100 for. Going after a brand new keyword that you're not even in the top 100 for is a lot more work than going after one that you're already on the bottom of page one for. And what you realize with Google Search Console is that you rank for a lot of long tail keywords at the bottom of page one that you're not even trying to go after, but yet they drive traffic and they convert visitors into customers. So once you have those keywords, you wanna look at them and Google Search Console shows you all these keywords. You wanna then go to your landing page and make sure those keywords are in your title tag, your meta description, your heading tag, and within the content of your page. By doing that, you'll slowly start increasing your rankings for those pages that you're at the bottom of page one for. The last tip I have for you to finding amazing keywords is to use Google Trends. It's another free tool by Google. It breaks down keyword traffic from web, images, news, right? This breaks down what keywords are climbing in popularity. And you wanna go after the keywords that aren't popular yet, but are climbing. For example, Apple has a ton of iPhones, right? I don't know what the next one they're gonna release, but let's say it's the iPhone 100. If they're gonna release the iPhone 100, you wanna talk about it before everyone else is talking about it because the moment you're one of the first adopters, one of the factors that Google has when it comes to rankings is time. It's hard to outrank older pages. It's not impossible, it's just harder. So why not be one of the first people to blog about new terms that aren't popular yet? So let's say the iPhone 100 is coming out. You could be blogging about it, you can be talking about iPhone 100 cases, iPhone 100 apps, new features that they have, and even if you don't know them all, just blog about the ones you do know about. And you could even make your own predictions. Let's say you don't know anything about the iPhone 100. You could be writing articles about, huh, here's my 10 predictions for the iPhone 100. Even if they're wrong, that's okay. You're not lying to people. As long as you're taking really good educated guesses and providing amazing content, people won't have issues. So write about new upcoming keywords because you're not gonna get traffic for them right away, but in two, three months or even a year, you're gonna be dominating because no one else went after those keywords before you did. Just think about green tea and acai berries and all of those 
hot, crazy nutrition terms. Yes, they're really popular now and they're buzzwords, but back in the day, no one was really looking at them. And if you're not sure what keywords are up and coming, just tell me the keyword or link in the comments below using the Google Trends link, and I'll tell you if it's a good keyword or a bad keyword, if it's up and coming or it's declining. That way you're not wasting your time writing articles on stuff that won't be popular. So make sure you subscribe to this channel, share it, leave a comment below, and I'm there to help you succeed.